Uh, well, hello. Hello, everybody, and uh, I hope you're all well. I hope your families are well. I hope your students are well, and I hope your colleagues are well. And thanks for giving me uh, an hour of your time. Uh, thanks, Paul and the team. I appreciate it massively. So um, I am prob oh, well, I most certainly am the uh, going to be the least techie of the presenters today. Um, if I am using something um, technological, then you know that it's it's going to serve an extremely practical and probably slightly primitive purpose. Um, but um, we go on <laughs> as we must. I've got about uh, five techniques that I'd like to show you. Uh, they don't involve anything uh, that isn't um, anything more than the voice recorder that you have on your laptop uh, or your computer or and, and, and the camera as well. Um, so the first one I'm going to use because it was interesting in the um, in the in the pre talk survey. Thank you. The uh, 133 of you who filled that in. It was interesting. Somebody asked me, you know, why do I need to use uh, audio? Why is it good? So I thought, right, I'm going to answer it and I'm going to use one of uh, Michael Hoey's uh, problem resolution patterns in chapter seven of this fine book. There you go. Textual interaction. Um, and uh, so we've got a situation, problem, resolution um, and evaluation, which is a nice little model um, to use to, to organise your sessions or to write articles indeed. Situation is this. Most of us, according to the survey, these are this is information that you guys gave me. Most of us have writings to correct. The vast majority of the people who filled in the survey have more than 10. Uh, in general, we like correcting. Um, again, this is details that you guys gave me. We either use a correction code to correct everything or we correct everything with little notes or we correct you know, the most important things. Um, we try the majority of us to get our students to do something with the corrections that we give them um, to their writings. Um, but maybe we're not entirely certain that they're making the best use, only a small percentage there. So the problem with marking writings, I think is threefold. Uh, the first one is time. I asked you guys if you feel you have enough time to mark the written work that you get. And the overwhelming response was no, that was the blue there. That was the majority of us. Another problem is space. If you want to give your students feedback on their writing, sometimes you find yourself trying to squeeze in information at the top of the page, in the margins, down the side. Maybe you start under the line, but then you have to kind of go around like this. Um, so it can be a little bit tricky in terms of, you know, having the space to, to, to give them the feedback you want. And then the other problem, I think, especially exacerbated since, um, since the pandemic, is the fact that we're receiving lots and lots of different formats so you might have some students bringing you in writings on paper you might have some students bringing you in writings that they've printed out they might be word processed or sending you word documents you also might receive pdfs which are kind of hard to to write on unless you have the you know the maybe the the plus package um you might have students sending you photographs of their writings. And I even had, during the pandemic, I had somebody send me a video of their writing. They'd actually just videoed it. And it was quite strange because I could hear myself in the background giving a lesson. So we get all these, we get sort of often random sort of uh, random formats as well. So the response, this first response, I, I will, not attempt to conceal the solution at all. It's my favorite technique today. Um, it is 
providing audio feedback to writing. Um, and I asked you guys if you tried it. Again, the majority of people haven't tried the technique before. That's the green. That was nearly 70%. If you haven't, I, well, I hope to persuade you to at least trial it maybe with, with, with a group this term or this year. Um, I started providing audio feedback um, about seven or eight years ago, and it's changed the way that I um, correct writings. This gentleman, um, John S. Harris, was providing audio feedback to his uh, technical writing students back in the early 1960s. Uh, and the way that he was doing that was with reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders. These massive things here. Um, and you can read about that in this article. I shall read you a couple of lines from it, because um, I, I like reading out loud, really. Uh, almost 13 years ago, John S. Harris of Brigham Young University began using reel-to-reel tape recordings to facilitate the correction of technical English papers in Texas. It proved cumbersome and time consuming, yet the results in terms of the students' improvements from their corrected compositions was noticeable. Now, this is not John S. Harris writing. This is Mary Ruth uh, Farnsworth writing about 10 years now, over 10 years later, in an article um, called uh, The Tape Recorder, A Bonus or Bother, um, which is quite interesting. So that was in the, that was in the um, early 1960s. And then Mary Ruth was revisiting the technique in the early 1970s. So what I'm, what I, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to sell you any new technology, um, but I think it's technology used in a progressive way. Now, the first time I came across the idea of audio feedback was in an article written in 1990 by this gentleman, uh, by Ken Highland, who is, uh, who is one of the leading writers on second language writing. Um, that was in the um, English Language Teaching Journal, uh, and I came across it actually in about 2007. Uh, and the article was called Providing Productive Feedback. In it, he explains how when we're writing, when we're correcting a writing, what we can do is take a cassette um, and record ourselves and annotate the student's manuscript as we're going over it. So we'll be saying, you know, okay, so uh, point number one, and then we just write number one on the manuscript. And then when we give the student the tape and the writing back, they can listen, they can locate our comments on the manuscript. I did it and I liked it. However, as you can imagine, I mean, we were still using, we still had the cassette machines in the British Council at that time in Barcelona, although most of us were using CDs on a regular basis for our classes. Um, it involved getting the cassettes, recording them, giving each student their cassette, getting that back, finding where I'd finished the first bit of feedback, recording over it. Again, it was, it was cumbersome. Uh, it was uh, time consuming. Did the students like it? Yeah, they loved it. I mean, who wouldn't? You, you get, you know, you get a recording that's just for you about your writing. However, still slightly difficult in term, not very practical. And then, of course, everything changed. We got voice recorders on our computers um, and... And now the voice recorder comes in automatically. I mean, it's automatically installed um, on your laptop, on your device, and we can send them very easily via email or via platforms. So no more cassettes. Um, therefore, what I recommend as a sequence, as a fabulous little sequence is you get a writing, doesn't matter whether you get it on paper, in your hand, whether you open it up, um, on your computer and you press go, you press record on your voice recorder 
And then you just start reading and you read everything. Now, this is key. And this is something that um, the, the people that were recommending audio feedback or tape commentary, as they called it, they didn't recommend this, but I do. If you read everything, then your student, when they get the recording, they can just look at their writing and follow you. You don't have to mark anything at all because you're reading everything out loud. And then you can just stop and comment on whatever it is you want. It's almost as if, if you imagine that you, were, you had your student sat next to you and you're just reading what they've written to them and stopping as you go uh, and, and explaining. Now, sometimes when I recommend this to teachers, uh, they think, oh my God, no, I couldn't do that. What if I get to a, what if I get to something and I'm not sure how to correct it? You know, I'm not confident enough that I can correct in the moment. I need to, time to think. Well, my friends, all of the voice recorders have a pause button. So you come to something that's slightly complicated, you press pause, you have a think about it, then you unpause the recorder and you carry on. You send that back to the student, um, asking them to listen to your recording and then to redraft their writing with their own original, wonderful ideas uh, and your, uh, your feedback. So I thought I'd, um, I'd better play you some recordings. I know people, some people are, I saw that, some people are shy about their voice, but I mean, once you've done it a couple of times, you quickly get desensitized. Um, so here is an example of a recording that uh, I made for a pre-intermediate student, uh, 11 year old. Share sound, where are we? Uh, okay, three, two, one. Hi there, Albano. Let's have a look at your second writing. Okay, for Chris, you can do that, yeah? Okay. Uh, you could also do, if you want to be really flash, for the attention of Chris. That's attention with two T's at the beginning. A-T-T-E-N-T-I-O-N. Hi, teacher. I'm, okay, now, again, we want your um, apostrophes up in the air because they're not commas, so they have to be up in the air. I'm writing about the last holiday. You can do that, but remember, in English, we're very possessive, like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. So it's my holiday. I'm writing about my last holiday. First, I went to Costa Ballena Beach. Okay. Uh, it's in Cadiz. Okay. You just need to put in there it. It is in Cadiz. I did uh, class of surf. Okay, I'd reformulate that to, I took a surfing class. It was very fun. Uh, okay, what you want is, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. After, okay, after that, maybe. After that, I went to Sardinia, Italy, in a ferry with my family. Wow, what a fantastic holiday. Um, I would say full stop instead of a comma then. So punto, full stop. Uh, then I visited a lot of beautiful beaches. Put ES on. So I think you get the idea there. That was an intermediate student. I'm not doing anything special. By the way, that was just an audio. Um, so that's an audio that I send back to uh, back to the student and ask him to redraft. Um, what does it sound like with a higher level learner? So I'm going to play you just a snippet of uh, of an intermediate, intermediate learner that makes quite a few errors, and you can get an idea of how that feedback sounds as well. Uh, ready, steady, do, 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 go. Hi there, Laura, let's have a look at your writing. Okay, technology, T-E-C-H, put an H there. Technology makes, with an S, our lives better. And I think that's great. Okay, great, G-R-E-A-T-E. -E. But on the other hand, technology uh, um, makes that. Uh, okay, technology causes lots of people, so kill that as well, to lose their 
jobs because machines kill thee do the jobs instead instead is one word of people okay so Schmigel go away I've got cats invading the table so a few things to to uh, correct with that first sentence technology helps us with lots of things for example in this situations uh, in this situation without the s and you might want to say in this lockdown situation in this pandemic situation in this quarantine situation we cannot stay up we cannot stay uh, we cannot meet with anyone we cannot meet anyone or stay at their houses but we can talk um, or um, do that our friend and family can see us uh, but we can talk or can see our friends and family um, with photograph with photos or videos full stop okay. this is easier with technology technology T -E okay so I think you get the idea there um, there is another way of doing it like I say the, my favorite um, my favorite method is just to read the whole thing and not to touch the manuscript however um, sometimes uh, for whatever reason you can touch a manuscript if you want to. You can you can be reading and then you can be just making note point one, point two, point three on the manuscript. And that is what I did here. This is uh, and actually I was video recording this version. So uh, you can see here. Hi there. Hi, Mir. Let's have a look. Tequila. OK, uh, the story is about a man that goes to a private bar. I think you could see that. Could you see that? Hi there. Hi, Mir. Let's have a look. Tequila. OK. Uh, the story is about a man that goes to a private bikers club. So I put an S and apostrophe there. That's point one to use a phone. As the bikers um, were speaking and listening to music. Um, now, you know, to tell you the truth, I can see you've done this all in the past, so I'm not going to correct it, apart from apart from the goes. In future, I do your, um, your reviews um, of clips or films or videos all in the present. So that will be, you know, as the bikers are speaking and listening to music, he asks, because that's the typical convention. Um, he asked them to be quiet in a rude way, so they got angry and took him out of the club. When he was out of the club, to give you to give you an idea okay just to say chris we couldn't we couldn't see the video with that but um but i mean i think the audio was the main thing right yeah yeah okay. yeah it was basically me again <laughs> um, but thanks cheers cheers paul um so why do i think that this is good um that was one of the questions that somebody posed on the survey that I thought was an excellent question. Um, so the evaluation. Well, for a start, you can give your students more. You can provide them with uh, explanations. Uh, you can even provide them with options. Um, you know, so if you're not sure what they want to say, you know, if you're trying to say this, I think you need to put that. If you're trying to say that, you need to put this so you can give them explanations options you can stop you can talk more about a particular language point um another thing i remember reading i think it was rod ellis in uh, in, in a book on second language acquisition talks about the one of the best ways to indicate to a language learner that they need to change something in their utterance is um is well is if they hear confusion on the part of the listener uh, or in this case the reader so um as you're reading their text they get to hear the change in the tone of your voice uh, you know oh oh teacher's confused about that bit maybe that's not working so well maybe i need to say that in a different way um it is also far more personal they get a you know a personalized response it's quicker um, and you might be thinking, oh, but Chrissy boy, is it really quicker? Um, so I did a little test a few years back 
Um, and here it is. I corrected as many writings <clears throat> as I could in an hour. Uh, now the screen is active, thanks, Ken. I corrected as many writings in an hour as I could and recorded them. Uh, and they were, it was a mixture of pre-intermediate, intermediate, and a few C1 writings. Uh, and I managed to do 18 in an hour. And to tell you the truth, I can't correct more than that if I'm just writing. So 18 is about my top limit. I did it with a couple of those Red Bull drinks um, to speed me up. But um, so it doesn't actually take longer. And that's with all the faffing about of, you know, open the recorder and just save the file as well. They can hear the confusion. Yeah, they totally can come in, which is which is in, in your voice when you read something that isn't quite that isn't quite there. Obviously, it provides an extra listing. This is the point that um, this is the point that Ken Highland made in his 1990 article. So your students get an additional listening. I know they watch lots of Netflix, you know, series, but this is a actual, you know, listening on the level of writing, um, you know, language that isn't, you know, we got to get out of here. I'm coming with you. No, you're not. And stuff like that. Um, any format you get, you can just open up your voice recorder so you can process. This was really useful um, when we were doing hybrid during um, the pandemic, because um, all sorts of, you know, you get PDFs, you get that mixture of formats I mentioned, and you can process all of it. Um, it doesn't matter because you're not having to actually write on anything. It also, when you send this back to the learner, it puts the onus back on them. It's like, OK, now I've got this recording. I have to do something with it. And finally, you can speak as quickly as you want to. You can speak naturally um, because your students have that as a recording. They can go back and they can locate your points uh, within your stream of speech or your ramblings. So that's the technique that I use the most. Um, if you try it, please let me know. We'll be sending you uh, a... Or it will be available, uh, a checklist if you want to follow up on some of these points um, for, for you to try in your classrooms. OK, technique two, recording instructions. I first came across this idea in, I don't think her name's there. If anybody knows who this lady is, type it in the chat. You get 10 points. Oh, nearly, Hender. Cowley, yeah, you got it. OK, so that's Sue Cowley. She's the author of um, Seventies of, it's not our most famous book, but Seventies of Practical Differentiation. It's a very little book, little manual. Um, but I got this a few years back and uh, there are some great ideas in this. She's also got a YouTube channel uh, where she gives classroom management strategies and the strategies that she gives are solid. I like, I really enjoy listening to her. Um, now, one of the ideas that she said was when you're teaching um, or when you're going to lead an activity that is uh, that has a complicated set of instructions, um, record yourself giving the instructions and maybe demonstrating the activity itself. And I really like that because I mean, I don't know about you, I think instruction giving is one of the most stressful moments of our teaching day. So I thought, right, I'll try that. And I tried it. I started, uh, I, I trialed it first with my primary students. Uh, so I'm just going to show you a couple of screenshots from um, a couple of little videos that I made then. So this is me. I've opened up my uh, recorder and I'm just saying hello to the students. If you if you have only a few students, you can actually name them all. And then when they're watching the recording in class, you see them going, ha oh, ha teacher said my name. Obviously, if you've got 50 students, that's probably not practical. The other consideration is if you do name them, you can't use the same clip the next year or with another group. So there's always a balance there. So here I'm saying hello to the class and then I'm showing them uh, how to draw um, Halloween characters on dried beans. And this is me in the class with the students. And basically, I'm playing them the other me. They're listening to the instructions, then they do the activity. 
Uh, I'm going to try to share with you um, that video so you can see, uh, again, you can see that it's sort of nothing special. Um, literally just am talking through the technique. Let's see how this goes. Where are you? Video, 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 video. <laughs> okay. Okay, hello again. So this is... So can you guys, let's, I'll just ask you in the chat, can you see the video to start with? Or could you see the video when it came up? No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll try it again. I might close a few things. Close a few things on my computer to start with. Okay. Can't see the video. Let's try again. Okay, hello again. So this is how we make our beans. So first, we take a permanent pen. It's a permanent. So we don't write on paper, no. We don't write on the skin, no. On the table, no. We just write on the beans. So we're going to do our skeleton bean first. So I take the bean and start like that. Okay, I'm going to give it another go. Share the screen itself. It would be lovely if you guys can see these. Okay. Yeah, I think when you do the share, you can kind of share a particular screen, can't you? Mm. Okay, I'm going a particular straight. window. Go on in. <laughs> Try and do something just a little bit different because if you keep doing the same thing, nothing changes, does it? So I've opened up the window, new share. <laughs> what happens if you? Oh yeah, there you go. Hang on. What have you got an idea? No, no, I haven't actually. Um... Hmm. It's interesting because when we tested it before, it did work, didn't it? Yeah. So this is how we make our beans. So first, we take yeah, no, it is. Let's see it. Yeah, it's really odd. Um, no. We don't write on the skin. No. On the table. No. We just write on the beans. So we're going to do our skeleton bean first. So we take bean. And ding, 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 ding. Mm. I'm trying to think. I'm not sure what I can suggest really, Chris, because you're using a PC. I'm just trying to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
if you yeah if you open up the video first so that it's kind of open in what do you use is it movie maker or move or whatever it is mm -hmm. um and then perhaps uh, there we go yeah i think so click play okay hello again so uh, this no. is oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 perfect. So yeah. first, we take Working. a permanent pen. These are permanent. So we don't write on paper, no. We don't write on the skin, no. On the table, no. We just write on the beans. So we're going to do our skeleton bean first. So I take the bean and... Start like that. Then we've got the skeleton head. Now we draw the skeleton teeth. There's the skeleton teeth. Then we draw the skeleton eyes. And then we draw the skeleton nose. And there you go, it's a skeleton. Okay, so what do we do with our skeleton? Well, we take our skeleton, Take some blue tack, put the blue tack on the back of the skeleton. I'm going to put the skeleton in the house. <laughs> okay, so you get the idea there. Um, Here is another uh, demonstration. This is, I'm, I'm showing the children how we're using, going to use beetroot uh, and turmeric. And we're going to use the natural colors in them to create a little character called Matilda. Again, if you've got teenagers uh, and you're, you have staged instructions, you can give your instructions like this. You don't have to have the demonstration. Why is it good? Okay, the reason I think that when we give instructions in class, it's so stressful, is because half of our brain is thinking about grading our language and making the verbal instructions clear. The other half is thinking about trying to stage the instructions and that's it, we haven't got any more space. But really we need another half a brain or whole brain or two brains to make sure that the students are actually listening to us. So we're trying to do all that at the same time. When you do it like this, when you record your instructions, you can focus on the instructions. And when you're playing the recording in class, you can focus on making sure that everybody else is listening to the other you. Um, Chris, so, Chris. Yes. Sorry. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, you can, you've basically cloned yourself. Uh, the other thing is if they don't get it, you can play it uh, to the whole group. If a, one student doesn't get it, they can come to the front. This is a point Sue Cowley makes. You can give them a set of headphones. They can listen to that recording again. Or you can leave it looping in the background so they get that continual demonstration. If somebody comes in late to the class, listen to the recording. Um, if somebody is absent, this is on the next slide, but then you can simply send them the instructions um, electronically as well. And if you're doing any kind of uh, formal teacher development course, it means that you can actually just listen to your own instructions and re-examine how well you're staging them and ask yourself, you know, if I was 13, would I understand that? Uh, the other thing is once you're in class, it really is less tiring. So what you're doing is you're spreading out your teacher load during the day. Um, because you're doing the difficult explanation of the instructions before the lesson. In the lesson, you can have a little rest. Um, and it's, it's a little bit of time out. Chris, sorry, just yeah. really, really quickly. Um, I think, I don't know if you're sharing, I think you're sharing your screen rather than the slide. So things like the chat box, it's a bit weird. It kind of, it sort of shows as a big grey box over the slide. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll close that. I saw this happen actually recently yeah. uh, on the IATEFL one. I've just closed the chat box. Does that help? No, it's still there. Yes, now it's gone. And there's a couple of other things in there. But I mean, don't worry about that. I think it's just sort of right at the top of the slide. Oh, um, that is, the, that's the control panel. 
I don't think uh, I can okay. hear that one, but okay, okay. I think that's right. I think that's, that's a weird thing on on the maybe on the actual Zoom program itself because we saw that in the Iron Temple uh, Wild yeah. conference the other okay. day. It's weird because it was it was fine before. Um, yeah. Anyway. Okay. All right. It we'll, behaves we'll differently when, yeah, when everybody's around, doesn't it? It's a... Yeah. No. Go on. Carry okay. on. Sorry. Cool. Cheers. Uh, next technique: pre-recorded dictations. Um, so, again, this is very similar, but I mean, um, we give a dictation in class. Again, we're trying to focus on the staging, making sure everybody's listening, uh, and you know what could be or should be a nice technique can again, sometimes end up slightly stressful. So what I like to do is create a standalone dictation. Uh, I'll often use the um, snap camera um, lens filters at home uh, and then take it to class and show it to my students in class. I'm going to try to show you uh, some of these. Uh, here are some stills if it doesn't work. So that's a, this is the snap camera um, lens filters. Um, and this one, I'll just knock that into the chat. So that's snap camera. If you install it on your computer, make sure that, um, you know, it, it's not active when you attend an important conference uh, or webinar, because you could pop up, you don't want to pop up with the face of a potato uh, or a zebra um, or a skeleton. Gray boxes are covering my slides. Yeah, sorry about the grey boxes. I'll come back to those in a minute uh, and and try to get rid of them. Um, if you just, um, I reckon if you just when you share the screen, um, yep. if you just sort of share the window that's got the PowerPoint in in presentation mode, and then that will that should fix it. Share the okay. <laughs> uh, okay. I think I can do that. I'm going to try and share a video now. We'll see how that goes. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Do, 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 do. You'll have to let me know. Three, two, one. Hey. I bet you can't see that. No, no, alas, not. <laughs> Hang on, I think I can fix this one. So. see that is that working yep that's working hey return of the potato this time it's the presidential potato okay so we're still on shops and services let's see how we go okay this is a place begins with f it's where you go when you want to buy a lovely bunch of flowers for somebody you care about Next one is uh, where you go when you want to buy something uh, for the outside, when you want to buy plant pots or compost or a bench to sit outside. Helps if you actually have a house and some surrounding green area. Place where you go when you want to buy seeds. I think maybe here we might call them like viveros or something like that. So here I'm giving the dictation. Again, it's just a dictation from the vocabulary um, dictionary at the back of the course book. We're revising for, for an upcoming exam. Uh, the important, the other important thing is that we go over in the recording, you actually give the answers as well. So I'm just going to forward a little bit to, uh, to where I'm giving the answers. And that's it. OK, so let's go over these. Um, so number one was florists, florists. Number two was garden center. Uh, number three, one word, 
green grocers remember so um now the important the, the reason i stress going over the answers is because if you do that you basically create a standalone video which enables you in the class again just to have a little bit of downtime because all of the answers are contained in the recording itself let's save this Is that better? Have I got rid of those funny square things now? You have. Um, we can't see those, but we can't see your slides, if that's what you're looking at. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. So, all right, all right. Okay. Maybe the... No, they're still there. Still there. But... Still oh. there, yeah. That's a shame. That's weird, isn't it? Sorry about the grey box. I mean, there's only there's only the two little ones at the top. So let's hope they don't not... get. Let's hope they don't get bigger. <laughs> so... maybe, yeah, no. Maybe just read that, that that first that number one. What does that? Say? Okay, yeah, fine. Go on, carry on, carry on. Okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, I'll read the first one. Uh, so it says uh, again, it allows you to focus on on the instructions or on the dictation. If the novelty of seeing you up there means that they often pay more attention to the digital you than the real you in the class for some reason. Um, and the other thing is because they know you're not stopping the clip every every few minutes, so they know this is an ongoing thing. So they rush more to keep up because they know they, they can't say to you, stop, 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 because that's how dictations can often deteriorate. Um, you can use it with multiple groups. Um, I've been using the same dictations for a couple of years because I'm using the same course book. Um, and like I say, it gives you that moment of, of downtime. I'm not going to try and play you any more of those um, because it's all, it's all a bit tricky. Um, OK, the next technique is actual videos that you've shot around your house. Uh, so you can see here, I've, this is um, <clears throat> this is my cat drinking from a, a water fountain that I got in. This was the first night. And this clip here is me showing the students my um my chili seeds which i ordered from finland uh and explaining to them a little bit about the um the chili seeds now you have to decide i mean it's 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 your call how much of your life you want your students to know about so there is that kind of there's that thing but um what i like about doing little videos and showing them to the students. For a start, um, I think that it creates a kind of um, personal connection with your students. And you can show them things that you can't show them in class. So I mean, if you're retiling um, your bathroom, uh, if you're expecting a new addition to the family and you're creating a nursery room or a, a kid's room, um, you know, you can show them ongoing projects. You could show them um, a patchwork quilt that you're creating or a new dish that you're cooking. And again, you as you're speaking, you can grade the language. So you choose what comes out of your mouth in terms of difficulty and pacing, and you can tailor it to the groups that you're making the clips for. Um, later in class, if you're talking about, you know, your your project where you're rebuilding uh, a 1952 motorcycle or you're telling them about um, your paintings um, or you're telling them about, um, you know, some um, some food that you've been pickling and or preserving some jam you're making, even if you're not showing the video, then your anecdotes have an extra strength because they've they've seen, you know, so they have a mental image as well. Um, the way that I use them as listenings, as authentic listenings, <clears throat> is I'll play them the video first and I'll say, just, just watch it, just watch it and enjoy it. So we don't have a task that gets in the way. After that, I'll ask them, now watch it again, but I want you to write down eight things that I say. Sentence length things are best. Then we put them into groups. Now with your group, 
I want you to come up with eight things for the group, the best eight things that you can find. So they're listening again, they're pulling their resources um, and, and they're snatching or identifying stretches of language in your stream of speech. Okay, final uh, technique. Thank you for your patience and for staying uh, with me. I hope some of these um, will prove useful to you if you haven't used them before. Um, you might be out and about. Uh, you might have gone to the beach for the weekend. And you might think, oh, I'd like to record a little video for my students. Um, there'll be a recording of this um, made available to you. And then the, the, the content will actually be on, a, on like a, a handout as well. So you might think, I'd like to record a little message for my students. And maybe you've got five minutes on your day out, but you don't know what to say. This is a little formula that I use um, in order to generate uh, a short message to my students in the moment. I call it the, the G3WB formula, and it goes like this. So first of all, you start recording. The first thing is you just say hello. Hello, and you say who it's to. Hello, guys, at my intermediate class on a, on a Thursday and a Friday. Hope you're all well. The next thing you say is where you are. Here I am at the beach, you, uh, you know, um, on, on the south coast of blah, blah, blah. You say why you're there. I'm here for a day out with the family, for example. And then you mention something that you see in the background. You know, behind me, you can see. So just one thing there. And then the last B is simply buy. If you follow that and get used to it, you can generate a video anywhere and you know where you're going. You know, OK, say hello, where I am, why I'm here, what they can see. Goodbye. And this is it, it will help you it'll take out any pain of wondering what you're going to say to them. Uh, I might be able to share um, just a, a very quick uh, video that I made using that formula. Let's see. Let's go again. Do, 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 here we go. Okay. Come on, you can do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. OT6 people. So I, here I am. This is this is at the end of a training day. I'm absolutely destroyed, but I followed the formula and it still worked. You can see I'm looking at the wrong part of the camera, but it, it still worked. So I'm making this video uh, in um, in Galicia, in a little village called Barqueiro, and I'm making it to show you what I do uh, at the weekend. And recently, it's uh, that I'm coming up here and working with teachers in Galicia, and I'm actually currently in a, in a school you can see the school behind me here there we go working in this school uh just next to this estuary which is down there and uh, the rest of the village is down there can you see that there uh and it is friday night at uh um at about seven o'clock and we're going to do a few more hours uh, and then stop. So see you all on uh, Monday. Bye. So that's the yeah, that was the formula. Um, for creating your own videos. Um, uh, Paul, can I tell the people about my YouTube channel? Of course you can. Okay, thanks. Uh, I've got a YouTube channel. If you've enjoyed this, uh, despite you know my bumbling about with the technology, it's always a bit messy when you're showing lots of little videos, unless you're really good at, at managing them. Um, but if you've enjoyed that and you want more of just me talking uh, to the camera about teaching teenagers, the uh, YouTube channel is um, called Teaching Teenagers English, and it really is just more of me here, umming and ahhing and uh, saying, overusing the phrase, you know, as a discourse filler. Um, can I tell them about the books as well? Absolutely.
All right, thanks. Uh, the methodology books I've written are those, um, and um, they've got a lot of love in them uh, and some pictures. Uh, you can get them from Pavilion uh, or from uh, Amazon uh, if it sells to your country. And uh, can I share my Gmail? Yeah. All right. Uh, if you want to get in touch about anything, feel free to. I will reply. It may be, take me a little while, but I, I will always reply. OK, so question and answers. Uh, Shereen, I think I have some issues with my students basically in communicating feelings. My students have a hard time to express their ideas. Um, yes, I mean, with all of these things, you, it's context sensitive. So if you're in a school and your persona uh, as a teacher or the teachers is quite formal, maybe you don't want to go in with, you know, a, a lens filter and you've got a zebra head. If it's going to undermine your standing as a teacher, I wouldn't do it. You know, similarly, you know, sharing personal um, things, you know, it's there are it's horses for courses. So all of these things are context sensitive. I'm not saying it's going to work in every situation. Uh, is that Schmeagel, the cat? I'm afraid Schmeagel is uh, it was Schmeagel in the video. I'm afraid she's no longer with us. She made it to 18, but she's gone to the cat heaven. But yes, yeah, Schmeagel was in the in the clips. Um, OK, what difficulties do you face while applying this technique? Um, OK, uh, Mohammed, I think I've covered that, um, I hope, but I'm not sure which of the techniques it was that you were asking uh, about. If you want to put that in the chat, I'll try and catch that. Uh, OK, can we share the PDF? Yeah, I'm going to turn the um, turn the slides into a handout with a checklist um, and uh, we'll be sharing the link with you there. Um, OK. Do, 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 do. So oh, thank you, Fabio. And that's very nice of you to say. Uh, Paul. No, no, it's just uh well um about the question there. Do you think that the video recording feedback can be time consuming? I teach high intermediate adults. I think writing on the soft copy is faster because they don't have to listen all over again if they need to. They just need to read and reread the comments. Mm. Yeah. I mean it, you could I my recommendation is to try both methods. So they actually both work really well. So if you just highlight up one, two, three, then they can zone in on those. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, obviously you're giving your students work back. I mean, that's, mm. you know, you're, you're creating a whole new world that they're, so to begin with, they might think, whoa, you know, but it's like, I think the message is the writing is not over. The writing process and the writing as a learning process is not over when you finish the writing. Uh, there is more. Um, one thing, what, was, what was that tool? What was the tool again with that one? Okay, that was uh, Snap Camera. Uh, it comes with Snapchat, and you but you can in, you can install Snap Camera on your on your computer um, separately, and then you choose the filters. Uh, right. A lot of people have it on their mobiles. Um, okay, and that. oh, there is an, a, a one thing you can do. Um, if you don't want your students to have to go to the length of rewriting their writing, if they've only made a few mistakes, sometimes I'll, um, I'll send them the recording back. I'll say, make some notes on your own writing and then just record yourself reading it through and send mm -hmm. it back. So they've not had to do an entire, an entire rewrite. Okay. Got it. Uh, I've got time for one more question if you can. Fine one. So I'm just putting some messages in the chat just to say, because a couple of people have put in the chat about the certificate. We put links into the certificate just to say you will get an email um, later today uh, or tomorrow, which will have links to feedback surveys, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, so don't panic if you can't see those uh, in the chat. Um, okay. How did I make those videos? That was just the, uh, well, the videos were just the, the basic video recorder on my mobile uh, or or the video recorder, no specialist equipment at all. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, and un unless you're trying to share them on a large scale um, Zoom event, there's generally no problems. You just, you know, you take them on a stick and share them. You can upload them to, to YouTube 
if you've got a Google account, you have a YouTube channel, you can upload them as a, as a YouTube clip and make it private so that um, they don't go public. And then you just access the, the link in the lesson. It's a bit more complicated, but it, it can be quite useful as well. Great. That's great. I mean, fantastic. So much. Well, um, yeah, bless you all. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. And, and thank you. Um,